have. What is critical is how we channel it. I wanted to share, start off with a, an incident or a, an anecdote just a couple of days ago that I experienced, and it's related to this beautiful masjid. I was in Ottawa for some meetings with MPs and leaders in the community regarding what's happening. Two days ago, three days ago, I went, and I went to a coffee shop to get a coffee, and there are like about three or four coffee shops, and I was debating which one to go to. The one I did not want to go to was Tim Hortons, of course. And so I looked for one that I did not know much about and didn't seem like a big brand. And there was a sister serving coffee and tea to everybody. And she recognizes me. And she says, are you from Sayyida Khadija Center? And I was, of course, truly honored the fact that simply somebody saying, are you from Sayyida Khadija Center? Uh, and Imam Hamid Salimi Center, and of course I said yes, I go there whenever possible, alhamdulillah. She had just moved from Mississauga to Ottawa a couple months ago, and this is her masjid. And she asked me to pre convey salam to Imam Hamid Salimi who knows her. And then she points to her badge and she says, this is my name. And so I looked at her name and I thanked her and said salam to her didn't pay much attention to why she was pointing to her name, especially considering that there was actually quite a bit of lineup behind me. And then she pulls, uh, she comes to the side to offer me the cup of coffee, and she once again reminds me of her name. And I said, thank you, and I'll definitely remember your name. And the third time she points and she said, do not forget this name. And that's when something clicked and I said, there is a reason why she's asking me to remember her name. And I said, when I looked at her name, uh, once again, and I paid attention, her name is Haifa, and some of you may be aware of she, who she is. A Palestinian sister, wonderful, beautiful soul, who comes from Gaza, actually comes from Haifa, that's her name, Haifa. And she said, you, you need to remember this name because my mother named me after this city when we were, when she was kicked out in late 1940s and early 1950s from that place by the Israeli soldiers. And she reminded me, and she mentioned the fact that her parents' house and her mother's house is still there, except that is turned into a museum for everybody to come and visit except herself. Everybody can go visit her mother's home, but she is not allowed to visit her own home. Can you imagine there are, there's literally a generation, if not more, of people in Palestine who are not allowed to visit Masjid al-Aqsa? Can you imagine that for a moment? That entire world is visiting Masjid al-Aqsa or is allowed to with all sorts of hurdles and difficulties, of course. But people of Gaza, people of Palestine in general, are not, Muslims are not allowed to visit Masjid al-Aqsa except for very specific occasions and for sometimes very specific regions and that's it. This is the level of hopelessness, helplessness, dispossession that we were talking about here. And she said that this is, this happened 50, 60 years ago to my family. And she said uh, we are experiencing it once again in Gaza because my family, my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, Everybody is in Gaza right now. And I do not know how long will they live for. She's able to talk to them barely once a week. If, just to check if they're still alive. Just to make sure that they're still alive, subhanAllah. You know, brothers and sisters, despite the fact that I've been, like many of you, mashallah, concerned about this, working in this space, making noise and all that for all these years, but these are the stories that really, really should hit home to help us understand that it's not just about 10,000 people who have become shaheed and shuhada. It's about an entire, entire nation that is going to be wiped out if we do not get our act together. That just imagine how many thousands of new kids and girls will be named Gaza after, God forbid, if the final solution actually takes place so that kids can remind, be reminded and children can remind 
their grandchildren that do not forget my name here because my parents gave sacrifice for this nation, for this ummah. They became shuhada, in fact, not just for this nation, for the entire ummah. They just stood their ground and did not leave Gaza when they could have left if they had the opportunity. That they stood their grounds and they are still standing their ground and they're still resilient, doing whatever they can with hardly any food, hardly any water, hardly any so, uh, fuel, hardly anything to even at this point survive. So this, in this all of this bleak moment, I want to take a moment today to actually talk about the fact that we have something called optimism. We have hope. We are people of hope. Our deen is a deen of amal. And it's amazing that in, in our deen, and especially in Arabic language, when you have two words that have similar root letters, especially two same root letters, according to linguistics, linguistic scholars, there is a direct connection be between what they actually mean. So what, it, what I'm talking about is we are people of amal, which is hope, raja. We are people of hope, optimism. And we are also people of amal, which is action. We are people of hope and we are people of action because our deen is about looking forward. Our deen is about taking action, is about doing whatever is necessary in the most challenging times we could ever imagine. So despite the fact that we know Gaza is crying, so are our hearts. Blood is flowing in Gaza. So are our tears. But the people of Gaza are ever, ever resilient. And so will we be, inshallah. And with that, I want to, of course, acknowledge that there, the situation is very bleak right now over there as well as here. We have lost the entire PR war, the media war, really, if you think about it. We're still struggling to get our MPs and our ministers and our politicians to utter the, the most in, in, uh, important word called ceasefire right now. Exercise their moral courage. We also know that there are people and professionals in our community who are being fired, whether it's journalists, Palestinian journalists, or a non-Muslim doctor, or a, a cha Muslim chaplain in, or imam in Western University for showing solidarity, for challenging the biases and, uh, and, and lies that are coming out of media, for instance. They are being targeted. All of that is happening. But I also want to remind us that, alhamdulillah, for the first time in our history, some really powerful, positive things also coming out of, out of, out of this, what is happening. And, uh, and I'll talk a little bit in a moment about it. But I want to remind us cons that, that, that we have never seen this kind of solidarity, this kind of uproar, this kind of unity, this kind of, uh, of, uh, of action, collective action that ever in our community in Canada, in the US or around the world. The Muslims in, in hundreds and thousands are hitting the streets every weekend. Hundreds and thousands of people are writing letters and emails and phone calls. And it is because of that precisely, if you look at the statements that were coming out of all these political offices, Five weeks ago, because of that, you can see that sh tide is slowly, but surely turning. Despite the fact that we are all upset at how slow it is, and how late it is, and how many, God forbid, thousands more have to die. But the fact that because of in whatever capacity Allah has given you and I, that we are able to do whatever we are able to do, that make noise with, through legitimate means and peaceful means, that we are able to get one after another politician calling for ceasefire. In fact, governments around the world finally starting to call for ceasefire. And that's just one step, of course. But just on the way today, you may have heard an hour ago, Mayor Olivia Chow of Toronto asked for a ceasefire. Now, if you saw her initial statements, the horrific, just like majority pol politicians, literally same talking points, word for word, that were given to them by an, a lobby. This is what you're supposed to say, and this, not, this is what you're not supposed to say. 
but you can see the difference gradually is making, shaming our government and our leaders for their inaction or delayed action. And it's something that we're going to, inshallah, keep fighting for. And remember, the story of Gaza and Palestine is not just five, five weeks ago, five weeks old. It is 75 years old story. And it will be, God forbid, for how long, we don't know. But we will keep optimistically fighting for what is right. So I wanted to share with you a couple of things that, that, need, that I need to be reminded of why we need to stay positive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah, in sharah, which we should have all memorized, I'm sure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in this surah, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى and then Allah repeats it, inna ma'al usri yusra. Now, what that means is, verily, for sure, after a hardship comes ease. But then Allah repeats it, not only for emphasis, of course, as we know in the Quran, but also something very interesting. Mufassirun say that when it is repeated in, in the second ayah, exact same words, Allah means to say, inna ma'al usri yusra means, and with hardships comes more ease. So it's not just ease, but Allah repeats it, that with hardship, Allah will give you more ease. If you remain steadfast, of course. If you remain patient, of course. If you remain optimist, of course, inshallah. And it is interesting that in Surah At-Talaq, which is one of the most challenging times, God forbid, anybody goes through in their lives, and if, 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 if anybody, if they ever have to go through, may Allah make it easy for them. And that is divorce. And Allah reminds us in Surah At-Talaq, Whosoever has taqwa, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whosoever observes God consciousness and knows that Allah is watching and does not fool around and does not play around with, the, with legal, legal laws and financial laws and does not do all sorts of things to harm others in, in anger and rage and all of that and observes their limits that Allah has put, hudud that Allah has given us. What does Allah say for them? Allah has promised that Allah will make a way out for them. Allah will make out for them. And Allah will give you rizq from places that you could never imagine. Right? And subhanAllah, we have heard, we are hearing stories, even from Gaza. You know, there are relief workers who have gone just for 24 hours, 48 hours inside. And they're telling, telling us beautiful stories, despite all the gloom and destruction of people who say that we have never been this united ever in Gaza before. That we have never seen so much love inside that place before. That people, despite the fact that they have hardly any food to eat, they're actually sharing their whatever little they have with others. I know stories of people personally, I know brothers and sisters from Gaza here, whose families are themselves have hardly anything to eat themselves, but they are actually sharing with the neighbors, with the children, with, the, with anybody who has nothing to eat right now. And one of the things you're hearing from them is there is something called sakina. There is something called tranquility in the hearts of people. Despite the fact that they're roaring bombs all day and all day, day and night long, that there is sukun. There is tranquility in the hearts of people. And this is, this is what comes when you truly have taqwa, especially in such difficult times. This is what happens when you truly have yaqeen in Allah's help. That Allah's help will come eventually, inshaAllah. And what is interesting is that Prophet sallallahu alayhi reminds us in Tirmidhi and Al-Hakim. Al Al-Hakim, he says, hoping, hoping for good, optimism, is an act of worship itself. Is an act of ibadah. It's a beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu And what we also know is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu in Tirmidhi, when he said, supplicate to Allah Almighty and be certain, have yaqeen, that Allah will answer your call. Have, have certainty. And the reason why this is important is because people saying, I've been making dua for four weeks, three weeks, five weeks. Situation is getting worse. Well, it depends on how you're looking at it. Yes, of course, situation is getting worse on the ground. But there are small wins and small victories that are coming out of it. Right? And even for you in your personal life. And inshallah, we remain positive that th this tragedy will end. 
sooner, insha'Allah, than later. And we will remain optimist. And remain optimist, especially in your dua. Never, never waver in your dua. Have yaqeen that Allah will end it tomorrow. And it's in Allah's hands at the end. Allah has a plan. Allah has a plan that you and I, you and I can never understand. And this is what our belief is about. That Allah is teaching you and I something that nobody could ever teach us. And if anything, you hear this, and I've heard this from multiple sources. People, you may have read it online, but I've heard it from other sources as well. People of Gaza are telling us when they're told, may Allah make your test easy. They're saying, don't worry about our test. We have passed our test. It's your test now. It's your test. We, are, we, are, we, are, we did whatever we got to do. We have done what we have done. We have already lost 10,000 shuhada. This is our proof that we have passed our test. What more are you talking about? What else is more needed to actually have a proof that you have passed your test? It's really up to us. It's our test more than anything else. So let us think about that for a moment, inshallah. And, you know, every calamity, I want to share this with you very quickly, a few things that come out of every calamity and any calamity that are positive things, that are positive, that really um, are the blessings in disguise, as they say, can do wonders for you if you truly understand why uh, calamities come to us in our personal lives or even community life or global life. Every time there is a hardship, there's a calamity, there is some sort of attack somewhere, or it's something small in your own life. It could be a health problem, financial issue, could be relationship issue. Every time you face something, I can guarantee you that you will, one way, directly or indirectly, you're going to experience some of these opportunities and blessings. That's if you want to take advantage. That's if you care about learnings from your experience. Number one is it resets your priorities. Every time there's a trial, it resets your priorities. Think of, as you're thinking of, all, th listening to these things, think of COVID. What COVID taught you? Whether you liked it at that time or not. What COVID taught you? What, even what is Gaza is teaching you right now? You will see all of these are applicable. So it resets your priorities in life. It renews your faith and or your iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is an opportunity to rectify your mistakes and make tawbah and istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, scholars are saying that this is a time for not just tawbah on an individual level. It's time for us to do global tawbah, communal tawbah. It's time for us to rectify our personal look in, a, in our own mirror first and ask ourselves, what is it that I need to change? And then look in our communities around us and ask ourselves, what do we need to change right here? This, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can lift these calamities from our, from our hearts and our, from, from, our, uh, and from our communities. It's an opportunity to revive our spirit to serve the ummah again, to serve our communities again. It, re connect, it reconnects us with the Quran. It reconnects us with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu It is an opportunity to reflect on our blessings and uh, things that you and I take for granted and continue to take for granted. Things that you think are nothing or should be you're entitled to living in Canada but subhanallah there are hundreds of Canadians who are stuck here stuck there and hopefully inshallah will be making back soon you know they're the ones who actually realize what what it is to live in Canada and why you should be grateful right and they're feeling so guilty at the same time for leaving behind their loved ones because sometimes they have no choice and then you have an opportunity to reflect on uh, to refresh your, your, love, uh, your connection with the loved ones. It's time to reconnect with your own loved ones that you cannot take for your own kids, your son, your daughter, your, your husband, your wife, your parents for granted when there are so many brothers and sisters right here living in our communities. I know, I'm sure in Sayyidah Khadija Center, every masjid I go to, I've been told so many brothers and sisters, Palestinians have lost their loved ones. I've heard up to 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 or more. Entire pedigree, entire, entire generation, entire you know, tree of families is completely eliminated. We take those for granted when we do not appreciate our own loved ones right here in Canada. May Allah allow us to do that more of it. And it allows us to restore our bonds with our community when we come together for healing when we come together for action and protest, when we come together to make dua for the oppressed around the world. And 
We also need to, at the end, remind ourselves of the optimism of the Prophet Sallallahu There are beautiful, powerful stories from the seat of the Prophet Sallallahu that you can take so much, so much fuel for your optimism and positive attitude from. We know that the Prophet Sallallahu even when his life was at stake, and there were multiple times his life was at stake, he was a fountain of optimism. We know that when he was hiding with Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu in cave, in the cave on the way to Medina, to Yathrib, doing hijrah, we know that there were bounties on his head. There were men looking for him all over. And at a point when finally some of them came near the cave and one of them peeked under to look into that cave, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu began to panic. And he tells the Prophet Sallallahu that if he sees us today, we will be done. This is it, Ya Rasulullah. And what did the Prophet Sallallahu say? He said something that Allah records in the Quran so you can learn from it. That you can use exact same words when you are in trouble, even for small things. Inna la tahzan, inna allaha ma'ana. We need to memorize this. Do not grieve. Do not be faint-hearted. Do not think... Don't, don't, be dis, don't, have, don't have despair. لا تحزن إن الله معنا Allah is with us. And if is Allah is with you, then who cares who is after you? Who cares what will happen if you say something that may cost your job even, right? Who cares if you take the stand on the right side of the history that will cost you your job, your career, your whatever? Do the right thing because Allah is with us. Now it doesn't mean that we, we uh, are unwise, doesn't mean we do silly things, doesn't mean we do illegal things, doesn't mean that we say things that are offensive or that cause hatred of some sort. But stand for the right thing by focusing on human rights, focusing on humanity, co focusing on humanitarian issues, focusing on the lives that are being lost. That's what we need to be doing. So our beloved Prophet Wasallam, if you look at his, uh, the seat of the Prophet Wasallam. We know that throughout history, throughout history, all 23, 22, 23 years of his life, he faced every type of challenge that you could ever imagine and more. Every type of challenge, subhanAllah. Economic boycott, famine. I mean, these are natural disasters essentially, right? Things like that. Um, health issues, family issues, deaths in the family, being an orphan, being a refugee, being a, a, a person who lost every guardian in his life that he had, and finally losing his most beloved wife, his rock, his confidant, the first person who believed in him, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, and a, in a year of Am Hazn, as they're called, at a time, in a year then when he lost his only protector, political protector, his own uncle, in a year when he was pelted and kicked out by Ta'if, by people of Ta'if. All of that happened. And then he lost every single children, child, every one of his children in his own lifetime. Every one of them he buried, except for Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. You know, every time I go to a janazah where a, somebody's child dies, it's so difficult just looking at the parents. It's so hard, so hard to do a janazah of somebody whose father or mothers grieving because of the loss. And I think about, subhanAllah, Prophet Sallallahu prayed janazah of his children, every one of his in his own lifetime. And some were babies and children, babies and young children, and some were adults who actually passed away. Majority were adults, actually, in his own lifetime. If Prophet Sallallahu went through it all with a smile, went through it all with optimism, never uh, stopped his da'wah, never stopped his uh, his expeditions, his, uh, his, his uh, mission and vision, then we really have nothing to complain about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and all of us tawfiq to be people who follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa of optimism. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum al-nisa'il muslimin fastaghfiruhu inna wa ghafur rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Brothers and sisters, 
You know, I truly believe that from the rubbles of Gaza, there will be a lot of khair that will come out for this ummah. And I truly believe from the ashes and the smoke of the bombs that we are seeing, and from the souls of shuhada that we are seeing, there will be some beautiful, beautiful spirit that is going to come out from there, from the, for our, our own ummah, for our ummah globally, and for our work locally. And we are seeing that optimism. We are seeing so much amazing stuff that is happening right here in Canada. For the first time, Palestinian voices are coming out in Canada. Nobody heard those voices before. For the first time, we are hearing, uh, we are openly challenging our politicians for their, for their com uh, complacency and for being complicit in crimes against humanity. We have never done that collectively before. And this is our moment and our chance to keep fighting for the right fight, no matter what it takes, inshallah. I request you, as, as I mentioned earlier, we have people of amal, hope, and we are also people of amal. And in terms of amal or action, I want you to remember one word and do in, in uh, uh, one word and apply it in three areas. Challenge. I want you to challenge media for sp continue to spread hate against Palestinians, against Arabs, against Muslims in such divisive times. Continue to challenge respectfully their coverage, biased coverage of what is happening in Palestine. Number two, I want you to continue challenging your MPs, your mayors now, your councillors, your MPPs, anybody who is in any position of power to ask them to make sure that they issue a statement that is balanced, that, that talks about suffering on all sides, that it talks about shared pain, but ensure that they calls categorically for ceasefire, for humanitarian aid and corridor to be established. Categorically, this is something that we cannot compromise on. And number three is to challenge people around you in respectful, peaceful ways. Your colleagues, your friends, your bosses even, your, your, uh, your uh, companies, whoever, in respectful ways for their inaction. Or, or if they are taking action, which is most likely that they are funding, their corporations entirely funding the massacre of, uh, of Palestinians through aid, then there is a real problem there. And we need to challenge that for them, uh, challenge them for that as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and all of a tawfiq to be people of both hope and action. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us revive the spirit of optimism in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring ease, much needed ease, and rahmah and sakina to the brothers and sisters in Palestine. Allahumma dina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thubbit quluban ala dinik. Ya musarrif al-qulub, sarrif quluban ala ta'atik. Allahumma ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqeem. Allahumma sahil lana sirat al-mustaqeem. Ya nasir al-mustadu'afeen wa madhlumeen. Unsur ikhwanana wa akhawatina wa atfa. فعلنا ودعفاءنا وشبابنا في كل مكان وزمان وفي الغزة وفلسطين آمين اللهم ارحمهم اللهم اغفر لهم اللهم ثبت اقدامهم اللهم يسر لهم أمورهم اللهم اشف مرضاهم اللهم داوي جرحاهم اللهم اشف مرضاهم اللهم تقبل شهداءهم اللهم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين ربنا تقبل ما تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وقم الصلاة Please make sure we uh, fill the lines first, first lines first, no gaps. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hayya ala al-salati, hayya ala al-falah. Qad qamati al-salatu, qad qamati al-salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. لا إله إلا الله. 
Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Malik Yawm Al-Din. Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'een. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. Sirat Al-Ladhin An'amta Alayhim. Ghayr Al-Maghdubi Alayhim. Wal-Dallin. Amin. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan marudiyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati Allahu Akbar Sami Allahu liman hamida Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حميدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم my brothers and sisters just some very important reminders before we make dua inshallah first of all we thank our khatib today Ustad Taha Gayur mashallah he is from Justice for All Canada as you are leaving Please remember this, visit justiceforallcanada.org, justiceforallcanada.org. When you go there, there's a whole bunch of action items we can do. The action items that Ustad Taha was talking about in, uh, in the khutbah. We can, you don't have to write your own letter for MP, they already wrote the letter, you just have to put in your postal code and it tells you which MP it's going to go to. That's how much work they've done for you. And writing letters to the Prime Minister and what numbers to call and which campaigns to sign. My brothers and sisters, the way it works is if you want a bill to be passed or you want a resolution to be passed, what do you have to do? You need to hear from the voice. 
if I'm in the parliament, I want to hear one people want it or 10,000 people want it. So we cannot stay quiet. We cannot stay lazy. We need to wake up and sign these documents, sign these signatures. We don't even have to do it by mail now. Everything is done electronically. So visit them, Justice for All Canada. Visit nccm.ca. Visit the Canadian Muslim Vote as well. They're doing wonderful fellowship. Get involved. If we don't know how the political, political system works, then how can we change it? It's not just about voting. Yes, we want to vote, but we also need to know what we can do about it. So this is what I took from the khutbah, and I know the great work that Ustad Baha is doing and his team for justice for all, not just for Palestinians. They're doing it for the Muslims in India. They're doing it for the Muslims in East Turkestan, the Uyghur Muslim brothers and sisters. They're doing it, they did it for the Burma, Rohingya Muslims, which by the way, established Canada to be the first country to declare the Rohingya a genocide. And inshallah, we will be the first country to declare what's happening in Palestine a genocide. Because when you declare it a genocide, there are laws that happen internationally that make things happen even more exponentially. So this is why our voices are not being suppressed, they're being heard. And you saw, as uh, Ustad Taha said, that we now have flipped the way that the mayor of Toronto is even speaking by calling for a ceasefire. So things happen with the help of Allah. My second announcement is, my brothers and sisters, we are all dealing with a lot of grief. We're feeling sadness. We're feeling times of helplessness. Please join us tonight at 7.30 p.m. at this center. 7.30 is Isha Salat, so immediately after, we will have a wonderful program with Nasiha Mental Health. That's what they focus on, helping us on ways how we can heal through this grief. What can we do internally? Because we need strong individually and mentally to be strong so we can be there strong for our brothers and sisters who are being oppressed. Please join us, 7.30 live in person. We really expect you to be there and we hope that you can be there, inshallah. Last but not least, my brothers and sisters, as we're making dua for the people that are on the list and we're gonna make dua for our brothers and sisters all over the world, don't forget to make dua for ourselves. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change our condition that he makes us come back to Islam stronger, to the deen stronger and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pass the mic on to Ustad Taha who will go over the list here and then we'll make dua inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you Ustad Asim for, for very uh, beautiful announcements and encouraging all of us to take action. Jazakumullah khairan. Um, so there's a request for, uh, I believe, uh, brother Inayat Muhammad, uh, brother of late uh, Kifayat Muhammad, who passed away in Trinidad. There is a request for Tahir Javed, brother of sister Shama Qurayshi, passed away in Pakistan, uh, and for brother Nasir Sheikh, Nisar Sheikh. There's also a dua request for uh, two people experiencing cancer, sister Hadida Osman, as well as sister Bibi Hanif, as well as uh, people in the community who requested for dua, sister Salma Malik, Sister Lili Khamis, Sister Khatun, and Mr. Uh, brother um, Jabbar Khan, as well as Brother Hassan Ali, who is a senior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to make dua from sincere, from our hearts, um, that will be accepted. Allahumma adina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Allahumma inna ka'afoon kareemun tuhibbu al-afa fa'afu anna. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulooban ala deenik. Ya musarrif al-qulub, sarrif qulooban ala ta'atik. Allahumma shfi mardana wa marda al-muslimin. Allahumma arham mawtana wa mawta al-muslimin. Allahumma aafi mubtalana wa mubtala al-muslimin. Allahumma aghfil al-mu'minin wa al-mu'minat wa al-muslimin. والمسلمات الأحياء منهم الأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا ناصر المستضعفين ومظلومين أنصر إخواننا وأخواتنا وأطفالنا وضعفاءنا وشبابنا وعلماءنا ومشائخنا في كل مكان وزمان خصوصا في غزة والفلسطين اللهم ارحمهم اللهم اغفر لهم اللهم ثبت اقدامهم اللهم يسر لهم امورهم اللهم يسر لهم امورهم اللهم سلمهم اللهم سلمهم اللهم احفظهم اللهم احفظهم اللهم انزل عليهم سكينه اللهم انزل عليهم رحمه اللهم انزل عليهم ملائكه وملك اللهم انزل عليهم سكينه اللهم انزل عليهم رحمه 
اللهم يا لطيف يا لطيف التف بهم يا لطيف يا لطيف التف بهم اللهم ارحمهم اللهم داوي جرحاهم اللهم داوي جرحاهم اللهم اشف مرضاهم اللهم اشف مرضاهم اللهم اللهم تقبل شهداءهم اللهم اكرم لهم نزلهم لا اله الا انت سبحانك انا كنا من الظالمين oh allah we ask you by your most beautiful and blessed names oh allah we know you have the wisdom that we do not have oh allah we know that you know what we do not know oh allah make it easy on our hearts to accept what is happening to brothers and sisters in gaza allow us give us the strength and renewal of faith so we can continue to do more for our ummah and for our own communities here oh allah those who are being impacted mentally physically spiritually by this tragedy in in gaza as well as here oh allah make this easy this trial easy for them and make it a source of strength and resilience for them oh allah allow us to be agents of positive change oh allah accept us among people who are inshallah going to be uh, considered uh, uh, warriors of uh, of good of good change warriors of of action warriors who are going to inshallah do the right thing at the right time oh allah accept ours our uh, our uh, all our efforts and forgive our own sins and our mistakes oh allah do not make our sins to be barriers of your baraka barriers in receiving your baraka barriers in breaking sakina barriers in receiving your risk and your help that we need in our own personal lives and community lives and global lives i mean la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunta minaz zalimin حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل لا ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد